This is episode 212. Now you need to retube your amp. <laughs> it's uh it's lip smacking goodness. It's uh, it's it's so it's that, tasty that's and covered just, in just, chocolate. It's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tone control. Ding me. You've been done. All right. <laughs> you've, been, you've been dung. <laughs> We have it. It's hello. Wait, wait. I sounded that sounded like it was the end. I just uh, <laughs> the very first thing I said sounded like I was. It was a very wrapping up way of saying it. It was. Yeah, we could yeah. do the whole episode backwards. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, you've been great. <laughs> hang on. Uh, hang on. Hang wait, on a second. There we go. Second. I got. I had to. I had to mute a person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, we, we're back. <laughs> We're back, <laughs> and I'm cracking open the merch. Yeah, okay. let's talk about merch. Merch. Super quick. First, first um, up. First up, yeah, we have merch. Uh, th- there's a link in the show notes and kind of everywhere else. I'm going to try to put it because I forgot a little bit. Um, but we have a merch <laughs> store now, and you can go get Tone Control merch. You can get our, our Tone Control logo that we've had for uh, 212 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to call it call it brand consistency. Um, yeah. On basically anything it's a good you logo. want. What's right? I like it. Yeah, yeah. At some I mean, point, I was like, "Oh, we should change it and like freshen up." But then I forgot or didn't get around to it or got lazy. Take your pick. And yeah. then it was like, "Well, now we can't change. It's been this is right. us. Right? This is the brand. This is how we do it. Yeah. This is how how we are." So anyway, link in the show notes. I think, for that. I think maybe at some point we should um, we should experiment with like making it. Um, What's the word where it looks more real? Like it looks like a real uh, oh, um, skeuomorphic. Skeuomorphous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if we make it skeuomorphic, you know, we'll make it have <laughs> have depth and give it texture, and and then we'll just we'll take dial that it away. way back to like we'll just flat. totally fully flatten, and then that'll seem super new. But sneak attack, everybody! It's the same one. It's the original. Yeah, and then we can go back to this look. Right, legacy logo. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. Exactly. Um, Get yourself some tone control merch, <laughs> dogs, and you don't have to worry about like inventory or stock or anything like that. So just order what you want, and it'll ship, and you'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's pretty slick. And we'll get some. Yeah, Matt's got his already. Yep, Fantastic. stuff is starting to ship out. Got a couple sales. It's it's wicked. Yeah, um, we'll start. We'll get uh, some new stuff up uh, as as time goes on. We'll throw some other things. This logo is on basically every product that we were allowed to put it on. But I think in the future we'll we'll get more specific. So any any yeah. future that isn't just the basic logo, it'll be like, oh, this is going to be in you know this this product, or it, it'll be you know maybe specific types of the sweatshirt or something like that. You know. Um, yeah. Well, I, so when I say like, don't worry about inventory, it's not like we have to order shirts and then keep them in stock. They're printed to order. Yeah. yeah. So nothing, nothing to sweat about there. Like we won't run out of smalls or something, you know, like right. this is not, not going to be an issue. Or if we um, do, it's not our fault. It's somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Complain <laughs> our, to them. Our supplier is fucking up. But yeah. that hasn't um, happened. I shouldn't talk about it like it's happening. No. Um, <laughs> also, like you said, yeah, new... Merch designs and stuff. Uh, this the setup we have makes that a lot easier uh, than just like designing and getting shirts printed yeah. like you would in yeah. a band or something where you you need the physical inventory. So I'm thinking stuff like if it sounds good, it is good. I'm thinking musical and usable. I'm thinking mm-hmm. maybe beer or gear. I don't know. We got all we got yeah. tons of options. Um, so let's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, nope. Uh, possibly <laughs> no. How are you, Justin? So, Welcome to the Tone uh, Control. I'm a, I'm good. How are you, Derek? Welcome to the Tone Control. I'm crazed, uh, yeah. busy as hell, and kind of burned out. Really uh, excited to be here tonight. Long time, first time. <laughs> 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 no, um, really though. Like school is bonkers this week, and then like okay. we're traveling for for a little bit this weekend, yeah. and. Yeah. Um, you know, Baby Watch 2022 is happening, 
And yeah. what else? Um, it's on the train's like, on the track. Yeah, it's things are moving, but there's also that standing around factors, and you're trying to get in between. Uh, yeah. How how early is too early to do stuff? So let's do stuff um, versus <laughs> I don't have any time. Oh my god! So you know that's fine. Busy, mm-hmm. crazy. Today yeah. is like I've I've had like work, my day job, and then like schoolwork kind of every night after dinner for the last number of yeah. days. So this is my first night off in a while, and man, spending I it with us. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my um, up up until uh, part part way through last week, like my my being behind on work stuff kind of eased up, and I'm I'm back in the flow. Got got caught up, so I I feel I feel good. Um, I've got a, a bit of I I started uh, jamming a bit with Aria on her cello, so I was oh, like, playing sick. guitar along with her, which um, I kind of it's it's shameful, right? That I didn't think of that earlier. <laughs> I, oh, I, I I am ashamed, and I should be. Um, it, but anyway, yeah, she's super pumped about it, and it's sort of, it was sort of fun too because like she's playing. Uh, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, and they're basically rhythm studies, right? So she's doing it in this rhythm. Now she's doing it in mm-hmm. you know dotted halves or whatever. You know, <laughs> they, she doesn't call it. It's it's named after yeah. like the syllables if you were to say it. Oh, I you see. Know, that's yeah. what it's, cool. So that's they teach them. They teach them Mississippi stop stop, right? Which is like <laughs> four eighths and a couple of quarters. You know, so, I like that. Yeah. So, but but I'm like, well, I don't want to just play the same thing as you. We're in a band, so I need to like find gotta, some harmonized yeah. chords or something like that. So I'm like going, oh, but if I, I can use the this this chord. Of, and so then it was like she was teaching it to me, right? So I was like, oh, mm. can you give it to me again? I messed up this one chord. And she was like thrilled. And I got none of the like, oh, I'm tired. Do I have to do it again? Like sort of crap. That's so, good. That's good. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Um, I used to work with a guy that did drumline. Mm. And he would like, he would... Uh, not conduct, but he would c- kind of compose all the pieces, and he had all this crazy drum software and stuff for like plotting oh, the the marching, like because they're like football field marching, yeah, and um, the music and the steps and all everything to go along with it. He had all this like super crazy, uh, like everything was synced together, yeah. Um, and he was telling me that they do these things like th- these sort of verbal cues for different rhythms, and the one that he always would go on about is pass the goddamn butter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite use that one with her, but yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, and I just I think about that a lot, you know. <laughs> Pass the goddamn butter. So. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> all right, so this the behind the scenes here. This is going to be a twenty minute episode. It's going to be a quick one, uh, and we've already spent uh, almost eight minutes. So Ooh. we're really blowing it. I'm going to jump. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and thank the pedal genie. Thanks to pedal genie for sponsoring the tone control. Visit pedalgenie.com and start your wish list today. No, I'm just this is going to be the no, longest, there's no longest 20 minutes. Of- <laughs> it's going to be like three hours long. You guys, as soon as I said yeah. that, it was like, why am I even walking down this path? Um, I don't know. Hmm. Well, don't know. anything for a bit, right? Yeah, that's right. You got to just throw yourself into it. <laughs> Okay, um, so I let shall shall we shall we proceed here? The first bolded the first bolded line. Remember this one? Damn right. Um, Damn straight. Because everybody fucking loved it. The broadcaster. The broadcast. Everybody loved it. Is it broadcast or broadcaster? My my thing. Broad, broadcast. Um, the thing where it's written on my little button that plays the sound is like it text wraps like three times in the name of that <laughs> pedal because it's so small. So I can't fucking read it. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. first first yeah. news item. What the hell broadcast. am I looking at, Derek? Okay, so a uh, long time. Listeners, I guess uh, listeners from a year ago will know that, that I got long. on the <laughs> it's a seven year old podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, episode, um, li- listeners of 25 episodes ago will know. Uh, yeah. I got on the list for a Novo Saris J about a year ago, a little less than a year ago. And it takes 12 months for them to make one because they're in such insane demand and they're busy. And, you know, it's just, 
The, the wait list is the wait list. That's how these things go. So uh, I got the email. My guitar has begun production. All right. I'm fucking stoked. Oh my god. I'm so excited. So it's like so this guitar this that we're guy, seeing here, except, but except a different mine, color. mine will be candy apple red. Otherwise, the oh, specs are yeah. pretty much the same. Um, the black pick guard, mine will have a matching headstock, but um, like so it'll Sweet. be red body, red headstock. But this is the specs. It's got the neck binding and the block inlays, the big mastery tailpiece and stuff. Um, this one's pictured with. Uh, Oops, not that's that one. Not right. Go back. Nope, nope. I fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> He, uh, there. This one's pictured with chrome pickup covers. Mine will have black, so it'll just be a cool black and red motif. And then the, okay. the chrome hardware. I'm so pumped for it, man. Um, I've been looking. I got this like on, I got on the list as sort of a graduation gift to myself. And you know, at some point I miscalculated or or there was something <laughs> incorrect in my school records. So like I'm not actually done with school until the fall. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted well, to get on the list. So. But be, being is how long it takes for them to make it. You may be done with school before it. H- how long do we think? Well, right now. No, well, no, it should be done in the next like eight weeks. Oh, okay. So, like they said, they're on track for a year, which would be the end of May. Um, okay. All right. Well, so, that's not and, and far. no, it's it's soonish. And yeah, I mean, I'm friggin' well, whatever. Oh, We're, you're an adult. You don't have to like. No, uh, yeah, fuck it. It's mine. I, you know, I don't care. Yeah. But uh, I'm really excited for it, you guys. I'm gonna do like yeah. a, I'm gonna take a day off work, obviously, and do like a whole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll probably make a video or two about it when it Live comes stream. in. I've been waiting a really Live long unboxing. time. Maybe I don't know if I'll be able to contain myself to like manage all of that garbage. You know. That's right. Like, I, mean, I just need a, to like really be in the moment with myself. You'd have to have that. a camera <laughs> assistant so that you could focus purely on your joy, and then somebody else can yeah. just be. Sort of voyeuristically yeah. following you around like an unscripted television show. That's what they're called now, by the way. You can't say reality TV anymore. Oh, well, fuck that. Um, well, you can say. Got... Uh, so hold on, you can say whatever <laughs> you want. But fair anyway. It's an industry term, unscripted television. Mm. It's lingo. That's what that is. So I got Set the camera the... up days before it arrives. <laughs> Just do We're a time lapse three. of me looking out the window for a whole week. <laughs> it's Nova, Nova Watch Day Three. Thanks, yeah. fam. Thanks for sticking in there with me. Uh, what else? I got the chunky neck profile instead of their standard C shape. So it's a chunky yep. C, big and beefy, and I upgraded to the flame maple on the neck. So I really went for it. You got all oh, the yeah. bells and whistles because I really sounds, wanted to make it count. That sounds awesome. I'm, I'm just going to so show stoked. these off some more. Yeah, also, they added a bass to the lineup. Look at those things, huh? Look at this son of a bitch. Actually, I like this one. I like that the tone. Natural, yeah. Look at that tone. <laughs> Next to the next to the bookshelf speaker, mm-hmm. is it the piece, piece of furniture sharp. not everybody has anymore? You know, really yeah. ties the room together. But but here we are, sort of. I mean, look at it. Accent. Don't have a bookshelf. Minimalist feature. living room. Don't have a bookshelf speaker. Get a base. That's what this picture says to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shall, shall okay. we move on to our next? Shall yeah. we move on to our next news item? Yeah, let's do that. All right. No idea. Some fuzz. No idea. Uh, uh, the Aria. Oh, from Keely. Oh, it's the uh, the Keely. So definitely the, uh, one of yours. I never had. Yeah, that the pedal. compressor and some something else. Is it an overdrive compressor? That's a cool pedal. Beats me. It was cool. So, I, I like the I like the way that one came out. Me too. Okay. I don't have a web page for this one. Do you oh, want to give okay. me one? We're no, not, no, no. We're so not let me put let this me give screen, some right. Yeah. No, just let me give some background here. So, okay. um, Apple Podcasts remains to be one of the only platforms, or maybe the only platform for podcasts where you can leave ratings and reviews. And we've sort of talked about that well, over Spotify the years. Does now, but oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, just like in the so, past, like two or three months, they added that. However, Apple never had a podcaster uh, like portal. They never had a platform because it was just a place to send podcasts to, not upload them to directly. So you always right. had to go to your published feed and look for reviews. And uh, I never did. I just kind of forgot about it. We didn't have that many. <laughs> uh, and it had been so many years I got out of practice. However, uh, we got two more reviews in 2021, and I just discovered them. Like last week, <laughs> reviews because, from last year is what I'm yeah, going to title this because we never check this crap. So w- what happened was <laughs> Apple has finally 
uh, given us like a, a podcast creator's backend platform. And I can go in and like manage all the stuff for the show just exclusively for Apple Podcasts, which I'm probably nice. not going to do because we're on a number of platforms. But um, and they're also launching like a Patreon type competitor thing. I got an email oh. about. If you want to support the show, please just go to Patreon. Don't don't get don't at us on us, a different. Don't thing. make us yeah. sign up for a bunch of different. <laughs> stuff. Here's the thing: like Apple did this not because they wanted to, but because they were being left in the dust by mm-hmm. other platforms, namely Spotify. So Spotify adds the ability to rate and review podcasts and really starts fleshing things out. This is uh, some months after they bought the Anchor platform. They're pouring everything into this, and Apple finally goes, "Oh, fine. Here's literally the bare minimum." Yeah. You know, like 15 years later. Um, yeah. So if, yeah, Apple's, if they're going to come up with a Patreon competitor, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. Um, no. You know, I don't, I don't want to go do like, like a YouTube has their own like inbuilt thing that's mm-hmm. a little bit. You can Patreon-like, be like a member. Like, right? yeah, yeah, you can, you, and, and it's like, I don't want to manage all these different things. Um, it's too late. Like, let's, let's let the, you know, they, they, you have a different business mm-hmm. model. And if you were anyway. exclusive to that platform, to to one platform, I think that might make more sense, but we're not. And why would you be with yeah. a podcast? Get that shit everywhere. Anyway, so we right. have two new reviews, and I we always said like, oh, you got to send in a review or read it on the show. So here we are, a year later, finally reading reviews from Odie seventy seven and Matt X Y Z. Oh man, <laughs> these are Odie's. so good. Okay, what do you five got stars for me? from Odie seventy seven. He says, or they say, I like a lot of guitar and music podcasts, and this one is different from the others. It has all of the things I like about most podcasts with news and reviews and stuff, but there's a lot more interesting and funny stuff in the banter. Yes! All right. A correct assessment. Fucking ding, buddy. Thank you, Odie77. I appreciate that. I saw these two and I was like, oh my God, I felt so good because our we had one three-star review for years and it brought the average down. And so now our average is far more believable <laughs> and, at 4.9. That was, that was the one we talked about the most, too. I remember <laughs> yeah. carrying Solid on at three some star. length about yeah. how totally accurate and fair that three-star rating really was. Yeah, so now we have yeah. a 4.9 average, which, you know, is way more believable than a 5. <laughs> it is. It's in, There's inbuilt integrity there. People don't look at you and go, really? You know, it's, mm-hmm. yeah. like Sometimes it, they mean, miss, and that's fine. F- fucking obviously, these are real reviews. <laughs> Otherwise, they would just be five stars. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Matt XYZ. If, right. like me, you love the Guitar Nerds or 60 Cycle Hum, two other guitar podcasts if you're not familiar, you may find this podcast jarring because the hosts appear to actually have some professional knowledge or know or of how effects work and what recording music is like. <laughs> so that's interesting. So just to interrupt here, um, because I noticed that uh, my cover of pretending to have professionalism is really working on Matt XYZ. So I'm, yes. I'm glad to see that that's not just being lost. So a little bit of a shot fired. I, it's it's ungood fun. I'm here for it. Okay. Yeah. However, he goes on. However, don't let that turn you off because if you slog through all the useful information, you will eventually get to the butt related jokes and other nonsense and everything will be all right. Here, Nailed here, it. good sir. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Love it. Keep it up. Send in those reviews. <laughs> Even if they're bad, I'm going to read them. So, <laughs> you know, if we're, if we're doing enough to like make people Challenge upset, accepted, huh? <laughs> that means we have arrived. Wait, can you refresh the page? Ooh, um, I don't have it handy. Um, no. I can't. Okay. I, I don't <laughs> think they come in. I don't think they come in quite that instantly uh, on the Apple platform. Um, but. At least they didn't used to. It used to be like if you reviewed anything like an app or anything like that, it could be days or a week before it actually turns up. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll circle back to that maybe by the end of the episode and see. Just because uh, yeah. Doug in the chat just oh. wrote a review right now <laughs> yeah. is all. I'll, t- I'll, check it, uh, um, I'll check it next week, and then we'll throw it in the next one. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Uh, all right. So now that you've suffered through some of the – no, wait. I got it backwards now. This this was the fun part, and now you've got to suffer through the next thing because it's time for some actual guitar stuff. Man. 
man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what the pedal is, but uh, yeah, the man. Bogner Ecstasy Red. Oh yeah, those are cool pedals. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about pedals. So um, we're talking about pedals, and here's here's another one. Um, yeah. Mythos and Novo team up. What the fuck? What the fuck is right? So yeah. <laughs> Mythos pedals and Novo guitars. Um, they their offices are right next to each other, and so they collaborated on a pedal. They work in the same. Uh, business park kind of situation and they got their heads together and they said yo let's make a dual overdrive with the same circuit on each side that are voiced to the uh, you know the the preferences of each team so one side is the mythos side okay one side is the novo side and you uh, you got both and the only control nine right from the business park (laughs) yeah (laughs) I love it so the sweet eight side is the novo side nine is the mythos side very cool. Uh, oh, look at this. Here's Matt who acquired an airlane in the chat. Very cool. So this is a limited oh, run right. thing. <laughs> this is a limited <laughs> run. There's 200 of them available in the first batch. Uh, look more at the will be coming here. Yeah. It's, it's kind of pretty, isn't it? Well, I, I love, I mean, the simplicity and the almost symmetry, like looking at the circuit inside too. It's mm-hmm. like the exact same number of components, obviously several of the same components, and then a few that are different. We've got a, a, a another um, like a paper and oil cap here mm-hmm. where there's a seri- where there's a diode bridge on the other one. Um, but then matching transistors, and then these. Oh man, this is fun. The electrolytics sharp, match. I mean, I, I so, don't know. I, a ribbon cable on the. Oh god. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Go on, go on. Okay. I love this. So it's it's um really simple setup. So it's it's just got gain on the front, right? If you want to change anything else, you have to open it. Uh, yep. The in, internals, the little trim pots there are the output level, but that's it. So there's output level inside, and on the on the front is just the gain control. They stack one into the other from uh, suite nine into suite eight. Oh, really? It's and going it's, down. <laughs> well, you know, pedals go right to left, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, you know, but the numbers, anyway. Oh, yeah, I guess. So, um, <laughs> let's see. Single transistor topology with hard clipping. Uh, it can add a little extra sparkle on your tone, or it can get really, like, out of control and, and over the top, almost into fuzz. So, mm-hmm. the Novo side is like a medium gain thing with lots of bass, top-end clarity, asymmetrical clipping. The Mythos side, Sweet 9, is more aggressive with a bass cut and smoother top with symmetrical clipping. So... I got one. I splurged on it a little bit. I'll be honest; it was a little more than I was hoping for when I saw the. Are you the reason it's you and Matt are the reason it's sold out? <laughs> Possibly. I mean, there are only two hundred in the, this first batch, which is limited yeah. to this color, which is super cool. They're going to be doing mm-hmm. them again this year with other colors. Um, Neat. So I have it. Let's demo it, right? Yeah. So I've got Sweet Nine here dialed up at like just above, little above nine o'clock. This pedal reminds me a lot of the broadcast when I heard the first demos and stuff, and I was like, I love the broadcast. I almost bought one, uh, and then this thing came around, so yeah. yeah. This is my bypass tone again. So, move that up to three o'clock. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's juice it all the way. Whoa. So fun, okay? Uh-huh. Okay? Okay. Oh, and, and you can hear it you're rebiasing like you, when you, you turn you... the knob. Oh, you hear it crickling? Yeah. Crickling, crackling? Right, so this is the other side. This is at noon. Goose it. Yeah. yeah, dude. Well, you can, yeah, you can do all. You kinds get into of some trouble with that business strangeness. And um, yeah, and you can put them up together, like just mm-hmm. run one one into the other, and it's it's a lot of fun. I uh, 
I've kind of I've been running it with the Mythos side low and the Novo side high, and just kind of using the low extra goodness on top into uh, into the amp. And I'm using the Rev here, um, which is currently boosted. So if we turn the boost off. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's it's got. <laughs> yeah, hmm. it, it's it's. Um, I mean, this obviously the simplicity uh, and everything, but uh, you know, it. How do I? How else do I say it? It's all the knobs are well, in the right range, right? It's, yeah, it's 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 voiced. You know, like as right. a pedal, it is. It has its tone, and this is you know, I guess plug. I love Mythos stuff. This is my third Mythos pedal, and what I'm learning is. Zach over there is has a sound that he's going for with his gear, mm-hmm. and it's really evident with this. It's really evident with the uh, the meal near I have, and it's a great sound. I think like it's just this punchy, but like simple and easy to use, yeah. and yeah. you know. <laughs> boomer chic. <laughs> boomer chic. <laughs> this sound is boomer chic. Yeah, I mean, here's the here's the Mjolnir. So, I don't know, man. I'm really glad I got it. At first, I was like, I'm going to buy this under the grounds of, I just want it, right? Which is not something yeah. I do too often. Um, yeah, you get away with it. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, and if I don't like it, I know, like, somebody will come along and, and enjoy it on my behalf, right? I could sell it or whatever. Which... Yeah. Is a hell of a segue if I don't say so myself. <laughs> uh, is it so? Okay. Okay. Um, the, yeah. So we'll, well, next up then. Um, and well, it's, hang on. At the the oh, last oh, oh, bullet oh. on the on this oh, mythos okay. thing here. Um, the the conversation in Discord this week when I got this pedal was kind of around pedal scalping and gear scalping on reverb. Mm, okay. And how it was just sort of people were saying like you guys should talk about that. So, that's that's what this is. <laughs> uh, well, do you want to do a pedal genie and then come back to the to this discussion? Yes, I do. Because that that's what I was about to jump into. I was about to go that away. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, guys, uh, for pedal genie uh, for the gifts tonight, the, oh, yeah. we asked earlier in the chat, and I guess it was because Willem Dafoe last episode went over so damn well. Uh, oh God, it's starting already. Robert Downey Jr. tonight, everybody. Get, oh God, they're starting to flow. I better get this started. Here we go. Uh, there we are. Pedal Genie is like the Netflix of guitar pedals. Rent any pedal you want for as long as you want for one low monthly price. Shipping is included and there are no late fees or time limits. With over 1,500 pedals to try from nearly 100 different manufacturers, Pedal Genie definitely has the gear you want to try. Subscriptions start with Flex at just $19.95 a month. Try out one pedal at a time for as long as you want. Send it back when you're ready for the next one. For only $39.95 a month, the standard subscription includes shipping, so you could have a different pedal every few days. If one isn't enough for you, Pedal Genie Pro gets you three pedals at a time for only $64.95 a month, shipping included. There's a subscription for everyone and best of all, your first month is free. If you find the pedal of your dreams, the one you just have to keep, Pedal Genie will offer you a buyout option. Prices vary with the length of your membership and the type of pedal, but you'll definitely get an awesome price for the pedal in your hand. So head to pedalgenie.com to fill up your wish list with pedals, and they'll send out your first pedal ASAP. Pedal Genie, all your pedal wishes granted. <laughs> that man is playing Galaga. Well done, folks. Thanks, Pedal Genie. Well done, everybody. And and this um, obviously much less nightmare fuel than the Willem Dafoe, which is is all just deep deep fakes of him on top of other shit. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, thanks, Robert Downey Jr. So, um, apparently, oh my God, I got to remember to click onto these so that I can get rid of everybody's, uh, everybody's join my, my mailing list pop-ups. <laughs> so, 
Another from Old Blood Noise Endeavors. Yeah. We've had a few of these come through. This looks totally different, though. Don't they typically... Are they, do they go for like the all silver thing or is that, am I misremembering? Uh, no, I think okay, you're thinking so of something else. I think of, I'm just, I'm just full of shit. Are you thinking oh, of Fairfield Circuitry? I, yes, that's exactly, I'm thinking of Fairfield, yeah. <laughs> but they, they so, occupy the same spot in my brain, isn't that funny? <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I, I get what you, I get what you're saying. Okay. So, uh, Old Blood Noise Endeavors, Black Fountain right. Reaver, or sorry, Black Fountain Delay. I was ah. just thinking reverb on the brain because I own a reverb from Old Blood Noise. So mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is not this. Anyway, this is the V3 that you're seeing on the screen with a tap tempo. That is not the version I have. I have a version 102 oh. here from Pedal Genie, but that's fine. I think the only change in it is that there is a tap tempo with subdivisions. Otherwise, it is the same. So okay. this is um, a super gritty down here. analog. I'm just going to leave it here. Yeah, super yeah. gnarly, gritty analog delay. Very dark okay. sounding um, with some like mode options. Um, I think th- so. This one says mod org and vin. On mine, it says modern organ and vintage. Okay, okay, they just spelled it more. Yep, um, and the, the switch goes the other direction, also, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> what else? Right. There's oh, and the knobs are in different positions too. That's really interesting. So, they must have done a pretty big rearrange in order to get the tap tempo in there. Yeah, you know, so functionally. Neat. Okay, so we've got mm-hmm. uh, all your regular delay <laughs> we've stuff. Been asked to, we've been asked to pause the show for 15 oh. so Matt can go put mm. his kid down to bed. Um, so, you know, take take a quick 15, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Hey, take five. Smoke them if you got them. So, Ooh, all right. your all right. regular... No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Does your shirt say wake up? Yeah, why? Are you asleep? Not anymore. <laughs> I dig wake it. Wake up! Okay. I'm not going to ask about it. How about that? Really, that's that. fine. We'll just let the mystery <laughs> lie. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about it later. Um, okay. <laughs> Tune into the okay. post show. Tune into the post show for some for some extras. If you're not here in the chat with us and you're going to miss the post show, you're going to have to wait till Christmas. Eat shit. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a clear path out of this plight you find yourself in. You know how to do it. I'm going to write that down. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, anyway. this has all your standard delay settings, all your standard delay controls, mix, feedback, and time. But there's also yep. a knob called fluid, and it does some weirdness, a lot of okay. modulation and stuff. So anyway, um, I also have the Mythos Oracle here on the board, which is an analog delay, and I thought we could just compare the voicings of two analog delays. How about that? All right. All right. Okay. Wait, was the second one the repeat? No. Uh, this is the Black Fountain. Listen to all oops. that flutter. Look at that fucking flutter. I, you know what I say to that? Wow. Oh my God, just. <laughs> <me. laughs> <laughs> fucking can't that take you fa- anywhere. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, God, that was great. All right. Goodness. Go on. <laughs> it's like pitchy. You hear that? So it's it super gnarly. It's, it's like, like some, something spooky is about to happen in the movie. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, over to the Oracle. Not as dark, not as much motion. Oh, yeah. Just for comparison's sake, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I mean, the, the, right, so you still got that grit, that uh, uh, decomposition, but it's not nearly as severe sounding, even though probably mm-hmm. the frequency decomposition is, but because it doesn't wobble like that, it doesn't seem nearly so so um, messed up and broken, you know? Yeah. It's hard to yeah. separate so- those in your mind. I just turned the, the uh, fluid knob down. Doug is saying they call this an oil drum delay or something. I do think that's what they called it at first. I don't know if that's still the case, but it was like an oil can delay. Um, like the Ad- which was, Adam uh, Echo? Yeah, was, kind of. Was the same, one, yeah. Or, one of those early, early delay circuit designs. It, it was, yeah, it was actually like a can with, and, and with a conductive 
surface, the 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 oil was mm -hmm. conductive and it had it had a very it was electromechanical, like it actually turned and stuff. So Hey, this is us appearing like we know how effects actually work. Oh shoot, wow. was I doing it again? I'm sorry. You're doing guys. it. Don't worry. No, no, it'll stop no, soon. it's good. It's right oh. on brand. Okay. Okay. So I turn the fluid knob down. <laughs> And it's not as wobbly, you know, it's not as seasick. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's like a little chorus. -y. Uh huh, uh huh. It's, it still soups right up when, you, when you're playing more than like yeah. one note, right? So, okay, so yeah. I have switched it over to organ mode. Um, which I can't really see on the screen what that does exactly, but it seems to have a more uh, prescribed sound, and the, the knobs don't operate really in the same way. So that sounds like this. It's pretty slapbacky. Wow. There's still some modulation. You can hear it. And then if I go I over to vintage mode, I can't mode, see what organ what organ mode is. I can't see that they ever described that. <laughs> <laughs> is there a manual on the page anywhere? Uh, let me. I'll, I'll go around. There's a couple of like uh, suggested settings kind of mm. situations, but so then uh, this is the uh, the vintage mode. Geez. Super dark. Wow. Underwater, very soupy. It's a call. There's a call in the chat for an A major, please. Enjoy your A major, everybody. Yeah. Um, I, I put, I put, I su submit to you that that this sounds every bit as good as an actual oil can delay, except. It isn't an oil can, so it's not going to be hard to carry around and, and break all the time. And that yeah. makes it better in literally every way. Modern technology is better. Got tons of character. I really like this. So we're still in vintage mode. Yeah. Let me go back to modern. So yours doesn't have the subdivisions, your version? Correct, because there's no tap okay. tempo. Right on. That's the guitar part from a Death Cab for Cutie song I just figured out right now. Anyway, just accidentally learned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So yeah, man, it's um, it's just a, it's a thick and soupy analog delay. I think it's cool. Um, when I Very do the demo dense, for this, high, high density. Yeah. When I do the demo, which who knows when the hell that will be? I'm going to use the air lane with it. Um, I would do it this All weekend, right. but I'm traveling. So, fuck okay, it, let's do it right now. Doug says he has a request. Lay it on me, Doug. What do you want? He's typing. He's typing away. Several people are typing. No, that's not true. Um, <laughs> is the request to play not bullshit in my demos? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I got to say, sidebar, I hate my playing the most when I'm doing this segment of the show. It's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard, yeah. That's why I just sort of like tap a couple of strings and maybe one chord because I, I don't... Why bother? Okay. Crank the time as in all the way fast or all the way Crank, slow? Yeah, which way? Slow. Slow. Okay, okay so, slowest time, mix at Should 11, be... and use the air lane. Uh, are we talking 11 o'clock or...? <laughs> I think so. I, I took that to mean one past ten. 
Yeah, 11 o'clock. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, so yeah. Oh, 11, sorry. <laughs> that was one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, Cosmic. Yeah. Play me something sludgy. It's good, quiet, it's good still loud. Going. Yeah, dude. All right. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was awkward. The pedal is on the floor, if nobody had figured that out, because um, <laughs> it's attached to my pedal board. So, yeah, dude, yeah. I think it's cool. Um, I don't think it's really the kind of delay that I would buy, personally, because um, there's just features on it that I wouldn't use, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, like I, I don't. I wouldn't want that much motion in the repeats, and I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't use that organ mode where it's kind of a slapback. I would just dial it's in a really slapback, and yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Uh, Old Blood Noise certainly has a vibe to it. I have one of their uh, reverb pedals, and it it too is really extreme and really insane, and mm-hmm. it's great. Like they they just do this like they they're, they're right on the edge. No, they're right on the edge of like what's too much. Yeah, sometimes so yeah. it's good. Do you have a pedal? Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> I uh, that other one I, I I sent back too late. I I hung mm-hmm. on to it and I sort of continued trying to mess with it a little bit. Um, I forget what it was. It was that that bass, oh, possibly yeah, yeah. not bass pedal. Um, yeah. Anyway, it That's wasn't. Okay. It's fine. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We're we're fine. We are always fine on show. Um, so, yeah, so what's this? What's the deal with pedal scalping? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, my pedal board's in the way. Justin yeah. Vamp. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna quickly add this to notes. Pedal scalping. So this was yeah. a, a sort of a discussion that had been going on. I, I only noticed it today in the Discord. Has it been sort of an ongoing thing, though, that I just missed? Um, uh, maybe, yeah. It was when the airlane arrived. I mm-hmm. Because it was limited, I was like, well, I have to check Reverb and see okay. if they're for sale, right? Just to see what is happening. And um, because this happens with Novo all the time, yeah. uh, guitars, used Novos will go up for sale at you know, a huge markup over what right. they cost to purchase from them directly. Yeah. Um, but you don't and have it's to because wait a year. Of, you don't have to wait a year. That's exactly <laughs> it. So, yeah. um, and the conversation around pedal scalping came up in the chat and it was like, oh, the people, the, this is the worst behavior to see, like, this pedal was $260, right? The airline. Yeah. And they're up on reverb for 425 Right. And this is a brand new pedal, right? This brand is just new. like, it's, <laughs> Uh, rapper still on the box. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Brand new, like within a week, we're seeing them right. turn around. And it's like, you know, like that, that's just kind of shitty. And it, 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 this is the market, you know, like this is, well, the, it, the it's thing what's about, been going on for the last two years because there's tons of markets that this has happened for. A lot of things that, mm-hmm. um, uh, other bits, I mean, the whole, the whole console, like the latest generation of consoles mm-hmm. were both being scalped for quite some time. Um, that it it seems to be fading in the computer parts zone. I'm not gone, but fading. Um, That's good. But but it but it wasn't. It also wasn't just scalpers. It was like other, like the actual market value in actual stores was tending to be higher on on those things as well. Um, so, which I guess, you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, like, there's a thing, right? The the supply demand conversation. Yeah. But it's like I bought it with the purpose of reselling it. That's kind of a dick move, I think. Maybe just don't buy it. Let somebody else buy it. When it comes to guitar gear, and this is this is how the clon happened, you know, like and those are seven thousand right. dollars now. So I don't know. It's just I would, how much money can they? Re- how much profit can they be even turning on this? Oh, I don't you know. know. 
I don't because, know. Because well, so so what that that markup was um like a like was just it's not exactly this but it was like close to 50%. It was like maybe 60% mm-hmm. markup. Yeah, something like that. So, what is like what is reverb's cut? Uh, you know, I I don't know offhand. It's public. It's like on their on their how to yeah, sell site. Yeah, because um, e- eBay ends up being around fifteen percent. I think Matt says seven percent total. So that's it's like um it's like X percent plus dollar amount. And then Doug, Doug, Doug kind of says fifteen ish. So <laughs> one one of those matches eBay. The other one is half. If you oh, bump, okay. yeah. If you're paying to advertise on Reverb, it, it does cost you extra, of course. But, right, um, right. So but you probably wouldn't need to bump this. <laughs> nope. Nope. Yeah. Um, I just, I think like um, there's obviously it's it's greed, right? It's it's like oh, I'm just gonna I I see something that I think I can jump on and and make this money, but I I just wonder like that seems stressful to me and. Not probably worth a whole lot of money. I mean, they two hundred of these were in the batch. Yeah, you wouldn't make a lot of money unless you had all two hundred of them to resell. Well, yeah, but I think the idea is like, I don't know if I. Oh, hang on, Beth's here. Hi, what's up? Is this is this important? What happened? Beth screwed up making (laughs) dessert. Oh, she's come no. to she's come to share it with us. So, what ha- what happened to you? Look at this. You see this? Okay. Now, what is that supposed to be? So this is what was it cornflakes? Yeah. And peanut like butter. Peanut butter cornflake. It's supposed to be like little bites. Yeah, they're but, good. We've had we've made them before. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't realize I was looking at two different recipes. Oh no! This is the classic <laughs> issue, like on that episode of Friends. And um, the recipe that stuck in my mind when I was at the store was using six cups of cornflakes. And the recipe I was making asked for three, and I didn't even read that. Oh. So these oh, wow. are a little Extremely dry. corny. It's <laughs> mega corn factor in these ones. <laughs> Should I pour chocolate all over it? Can, can you solve that while I podcast? No. <laughs> I, the I say, it, what do you guys think? So pour chocolate yes, on. Then I yes. think pour chocolate Just pour on. Chocolate on, on it. It. I think it's still good. <laughs> what? Yes, I think pour it's still on good. It, I, I think I think there's no there's no reason that that double the cornflakes. Doug says make pour the bad. chocolate. Pour the yeah, chocolate. Just go go actually find a go solution. Get the, go get the chocolate and come back. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to do the it. Chocolate. She wanted she wanted no, us Beth, to say no. Listen. Do whatever you want. The, the the answer is it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> Can we talk about this later? Yes. Okay. But I just wanted the guys to They did. They said pour they the chocolate. They did. You didn't like the answer. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like the answer, that's not my problem. No, I, I nothing matters about that. <laughs> <laughs> the world doesn't mean anything. Uh, All right. Okay. You. Yep. Bye. Bye. Okay. What a bizarre interruption. <laughs> that that's I, I I mean of all things to be interrupted by, it's totally fine, but I can see I I've I've um I've been in your place and I mm-hmm. think I know what caused that interruption. What do you mean? Uh uh well like I was I was I, once, I don't know what my place has to do with it. I, I was once sent to the grocery store three times in the same evening because I oh. got the wrong ice cream the first two times. Um, um, this is, I no, think this, is, I, this, this feels to me like something that would have waited or been solved alone in another in a different well, time. And, and possibly, well, what, you know, you know, with a little more uh, focus might not have happened in the first place. The focus for sure. Um, yeah. This is we're traveling for Easter this weekend, and she wanted ah. to bring something for Easter. So that's what this is. Um, but I know I I, I smell yeah. what you're stepping in here. So <laughs> <laughs> about to step in it. Uh, yep. Yeah. So um, okay, pedal scalping. She wasn't, okay, pedal scalping. We're not talking about the dessert anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know we're leaving tomorrow after work, so there's like not a lot of time to do stuff. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Anyway, um, pedal scalping. I think an important thing to remember with pedal scalping is like you can ask whatever you want for as a price for stuff. Yeah. And 
like that's just on you. You know, if, if nobody buys it, then it can sort of right. no harm. Um, this is a two way street. Shame on the person who spends a ton of money on the thing too. Right. So, like, I, I, to put what you're saying, I think in a, a different way, like, part of the problem if you actually buy one of these, right? In le- mm-hmm. Instead of just letting them languish on there, the trouble is, the trouble is, if you really want it, at, at a certain point, like, it does yeah. have that much value for you, and then it's like, you you're willing to pay that much. Yeah. And if you don't on principle and then you you're you're the one deprived out of that. Like and and really yeah. you probably don't it none of that really makes it up onto the if 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 anyone's buying them then the market's going to stay there, right? Yeah, That's and tough. I think about like I'm immediately jumping to clones because they're the most extreme example for this. Sure. Um Everybody's like, oh my God, the clone hits $7,000. Like it's Bitcoin or some shit, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you don't have to buy it, right? right. It, it's Nobody's making, it's not like we need the real right. clone anymore. And uh, I don't know. I looked today, the, the Mjolnir I have is the 10-year anniversary edition. I won it in an uh, Instagram giveaway. Yep, It's great, I love it, sounds really good. Someone's asking $7,000. $900, oh. $900 on Reverb for the same one. Like what the hell? You know, and gotta, it's just I gotta find oh. <laughs> that one is signed by Zach, which like, oh, it's got special tone markers in it. What a fuck off. So <laughs> I don't know. I just think like to buy stuff, this happens with Novo a lot. Somebody will buy, and I don't know the reason somebody may sell something, right? Maybe they need the money, maybe they don't actually yeah. like it, but whatever. But it doesn't look that way. And you see this like really coveted and hard to find gear. That comes up for sale at a really ridiculous markup, and it's just like, well, are you trying to just make a profit here? And like that, just it's gross. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Probably, probably, it's are. gross. Um, and I, the same with the 1981, right? Those are way more available. You just sign up for his newsletter, and they come out like once a month or something. It's way more frequent than people think. But you can still go on Reverb and buy one today and get it in the mail tomorrow. For an extra hundred dollars, like why would you do that? I just, I don't, I don't know. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are you talking to the most when you say "don't be a jerk"? I think the person. I don't know if these people exist truly, but the ones that buy gear for the <laughs> like purpose of flipping. Or what? <laughs> no, the pur- the people who buy okay. with for the purpose of flipping, and I mean they yeah. do exist, but I think just don't do that, <laughs> right? <laughs> and if you don't like it. Uh, Maybe just sell it for what you paid, I guess. Like, the, why is that such a hard thing to get over? Yeah. And now, this is the thing. If I had a clone from 1998 or whenever they were going that I paid $300 for, would I try to sell it for seven grand? Probably. Oh, I'd, I'd be there. <laughs> look, look, if I had a, if I had one of these, you know, signed by or whatever, some, something mm-hmm. high value that I wasn't using, uh, yeah, like I I don't keep around a bunch of stuff that that I don't have a use for. There's no way. And and, and the thing is, um, like to the to the point of Klon in particular, um, I would I would very very quickly sell for a high high price a real Klon and then go buy one that sounds exactly the fucking same, mm-hmm. you know, but doesn't yeah. have, but doesn't have that crazy innate value, right? I'd way rather yeah, have the non-collector's item if I was going to keep well, it. Well, I, I think it's the um, and like the money. The, the, Sorry, the I would airline. rather have the non-collector's <laughs> item and the money than just the collector's item. <laughs> well, here's the thing: so the airline, when that comes out again, a few times a year, probably in new colors yeah. and stuff, it's going to be the same pedal, right? And it has become right. like the the these people who are flipping or trying to sell for whatever reason, it becomes a collector's item, even if that was never the intent. So, right then, what? It, now the it, blue it one. It is kind of a. It's kind of a, a, a an intent though. Anything kind that's of. limited run like that is kind of that way. Even if it never is meant, you know, it's not like they're trying to create a crazy market. But no. if they're doing anything in a limited run, it's it's with the intention of it being, oh, we're just this is a special thing, a- and maybe it's a special thing, and it's not like crazy desirable, but it's just it was still a special thing. Um, it's a special that, thing, yeah. Yeah, I believe that about the airline, and it's two hundred pieces. Mythos is a small company. Maybe they yeah. just make pedals in batches of two hundred, and we never hear about it for the other ones. 
That's right? how big their right. It's how big yeah, their plate like, is, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally fine. It's just that they're not going to prioritize making two hundred more. Mm-hmm. When these ones sell out right away. So then the market's like, oh my God, it's the limited edition, first run, serial number under 200. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and at the same time, it's just a fucking overdrive pedal. Like, get, get over it. It's, it's cool. I like it. I don't know. I, I saw on Reverb, yeah. you can sort, you can view sold listings as well. And there's a couple more that have sold, including the one for 425. Um, one guy posted one for list price, and I was like, shout out to this dude for selling it at market price for the actual, what he paid, Mm -hmm, plus mm -hmm. shipping or whatever. No big deal. And the um, pedal description was like, I bought two of these um, thinking it was limited edition, but they're releasing more later this year, so that's not true, so I'm selling this one. So that's... like, what is that? (laughs) (sighs) But but okay okay so that that makes me think the guy was planning on just keeping them because it was limited edition and waiting for the price to go high enough maybe one would assume but the price was already higher than what he said like it did go up and like did he so that's the thing did he not check he did, the market didn't wait value long enough. <laughs> or or right did he did he not check the market value did he not maybe it hadn't maybe it just went up like two days later or something or. Was he just he he wanted to possess it, and then when he found out it wasn't as special as he thought, he oh I no longer want to possess this. He doesn't actually care about the money at all. He was just like, well, if they release but, more, then this has no place on my shelf of glorious one-offs. Because he bought two of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, so does he still have the other one yeah, too? So. Yeah, it's it's. I'm led to believe that he kept one and sold the other. Because it wasn't limited, you wanted to have two of the limit. I don't know. It's I don't want to there's, pay. There's like, this? I don't want to pay seven thousand dollars to replace it when it goes missing. What? I, I think I don't know. I just I see the the pedal market kind of go weird sometimes, and it's like, yeah. why are we doing this? You know, the the clon. It's like the dollar, yeah. right? It's the clon is worth what it's worth because we think it is. Yeah, yeah. And that's true for. Everything, <laughs> right? People think like whenever somebody talks to me about it's, or I'm sure you've all heard this, right? Cryptocurrency, and then the yeah. person goes, "Oh my god, I just don't get that." Like, you know, and that's Except what they're thinking, right? It's yeah. and and I always say to them, like, really, is it is it is it that you don't understand it, or is it that you are? you are reporting an image of a person who doesn't understand it. You're reporting an image of a person who would say that in conversation. I'm the, I'm the guy, hi, I'm Justin. I'm the kind of guy who says I don't understand cryptocurrency whenever it shows up. Like, yes, you there. It's actually, <laughs> <laughs> and okay, and before, I'm going to get hate for this. I, I don't mean they don't understand what blockchain is. It's okay to not yeah. understand what blockchain is. That's a totally different comment. But like yeah. when they say it's nothing, what do you mean? How can it have value? And I'm like, really? Show me your credit card. Yeah. Show me your, what do you your think money fucking is, online, you dipshit? online banking. Anyway. Yeah. Like, you're right. We should go back to the gold standard, you fucking moron. <laughs> we have fired each other up. <laughs> libertarian piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> I'm really going for it this time. No one knows what the blockchain... The blockchain doesn't even know anymore. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. I just think... Before you're out there, like just think about like the the scalping think about the aspect little guy. of it. I guess yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm if I sell a pedal and it's in demand, am I a fool for not trying to get a a current market value? Right. If if airlines go up to four hundred and they all float around there, yeah. And I wanted to sell mine. Am I an idiot for not getting four hundred bucks for it? You know. And, I yeah. Are you asking sincerely? Because I have well, a sincere answer for you. I sure why not? Like I'm, I can ask sincerely. Yeah, um, I truly don't really have a problem with the scalping generally because of the things that we've said, right? Like you, you're part of the problem if you're buying it, but that's sort of a harsh way of saying it because the other way to say it is like, if it's actually worth that to you and then you're willing to pay it, then what's the problem exactly? Um, yeah, it, right. And, and because there is a there is an avenue to get one without paying that price. It's maybe more difficult. 
Um, well, it's just time, right? This is, yeah. you got to wait a year to get a Novo. And the, what's crazy to me is like, I can, when my Novo comes in, I could take pictures of it and put it on reverb and ask a thousand dollars more than I paid and someone right. will buy it. Some, yeah, we can, we can, you know, uh, um, and so, and, and, and I guess that's what it comes down to, right? Is like, what's the Novo worth to you? Because it, it's right. like, everybody has a number at a certain point, like if, at a certain point, the value of a guitar on the market exceeds the value of it to you, mm-hmm. then it's, and, and that, that's based on everything, right? It's like, how financially secure are you? You know, it's like, I don't, I don't personally feel the need to try to become rich, but like, there's a level where I'm like comfortable, right? And then I'm not going to feel like I'm having to reach for money anymore. But like, um, I, I feel like all that kind of comes in, right? If I had a guitar that I paid 2000 for, and I know I could sell it for 3000 I'm not starving for money right now. So probably, you know, if it's a guitar I really wanted, then the guitar is worth more to me than that market value, right? Yeah. But at a certain point, it's like, oh, shoot, something happened. Uh, we lost our jobs. Who knows what, mm-hmm. you know, catastrophe. And it's like, well, shoot, that changes everything. The equation is, that's that's all part of it. So, And this is, yeah, this is not an antiques roadshow thing where like you didn't know it was worth extra. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. like it's, that's not what we're talking about either. Um, I think the scalping, the term scalping though, it's that, specifically, right, exactly. it's that word. Yep. That's, that's the different thing. Whereas like I have bought this to flip and to right. make Intent. a lot of money on. I think that is, that's gross. Like, don't do that. <laughs> I think I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like that. And I mean, I, and I've it never comes done out of it. the woodwork every time there's this sort of market situation. There, yeah. there are people who will try to do this. I've never done that. I, I would, if I bought a pet, like if one day I was like, I don't really need the DRV anymore. I guess I'll sell it. Yeah. And this is like years from now or something, right? And maybe is time the difference with scalping? I think to a certain extent, um, yeah. Like these I, people who bought a, a, a 57 Strat. Yeah. <laughs> right. That it's now worth like tens of thousands <laughs> or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Like, haha, it's the long game, right? <laughs> so I had, um, uh, I had some uh, computer parts that uh, when, when those started to go crazy, um, I had one that was recent enough to be worthwhile for modern computers uh, that I wasn't using. And so I'm part of, you know, the game group that I'm a part of, like somebody needed one. And I was like, okay, listen, I have one. I know it's crazy. It's hard to find a, a graphics card right now. And I sold that to that person for uh, pretty much exactly what I bought it for, which is not what, a, well, I mean, that's fine. That's not what a computer part should resell for. Right. But it, because yeah. of the market inflation, that was actually a really good deal for them. And I was like, so that's where I drew kind of my line. I was like, sure, you know, this is not that big a deal. I'm going to sell it for about what I paid. If they went and tried to buy that same thing on that market, they would pay like an extra about 50% at that time. Mm-hmm. And it would be, it would go even higher later. So this was a almost, almost uh, a year and a half ago. So, so yeah, like, I mean, and that was, I used that part for a while and mm-hmm. then I got a new one and I had this laying around for a minute. And then, you know, so there was plenty of time. I definitely wasn't like scalping. It was something I did use. Yeah, yeah. It had higher value than it probably should have in a normal market. And so I did get more for it than I probably would have in, in a normal case, which is why I hadn't rushed out to sell it as soon as I wasn't using it anymore because it wasn't a super high value thing. So... You know, yeah, we the, get into the weird semantics of value and yeah. what it's worth to you personally. That is an sometimes an incalculable number, right? right? This this Mjolnir is a, apparently somebody thinks is worth nine hundred bucks. I yeah. don't think it's worth that, but it's worth a lot more to me because yeah. it's got some sentimental value, and I just fucking like it. It's a good sounding like pedal. It. Well, I'm not gonna. If somebody came up to me and was like, "I'll give you two thousand dollars for that," I'd be like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like good. I, you, I maybe $1,800 like it, but I don't $2,000 like it. Right. <laughs> uh, and like, yeah, where is the line? And also, right. like, if somebody's willing to overpay that much, like, jokes on you, bud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of overlap between market forces and scalping. Yeah. But scalping is definitely its own thing. Scalping is this malicious intent, right? Scalping is the guy with the ticket standing right outside mm-hmm. the you know, right outside the show. Yeah, or the buying something or limited and then and turning it over at, at a markup. That That's scalping, right. I guess. And and 
petals come out in limited batches all the time now. And it happens all the time now. And it's just, we kind of accept it, I guess. That's a mature boutique market. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the stuff that came out for the Petal movie, which I still haven't seen, um, that was all really, really, really limited. We really should do that uh, that character research to continue playing our part of people who have some professionalism (laughs) and know what we're talking about. Don't know what they're talking about. Wait. Wait, we do know or we don't know what we're we talking do. about? We do. Okay. No, it was okay. we do, but don't worry. We'll get past it and get back to the butts, 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 butts. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It's weird to look down at my pedal board and be like, somebody would pay a buttload more money than I paid for all this. And that weirds mm-hmm. me out. And it's I don't think it's a lot of truly special stuff that, right? It's not like you can't get any of this yeah. gear anymore. Right, right. I don't know. Don't go scalping. Yeah. Um, scalping's, scalping's not a, you know what? That's a hard life. You don't want to make your money scalping. It's not no. worth it. It's not no. worth it. And right. when you mentioned like the game console wars yeah. w- with scalping and stuff. Well, I was on the hunt for PS5. The stories when you were still looking oh, for your PS5. Yeah. yeah. It's still going. And Isn't everywhere... It? I, well, I haven't really been in touch with it, but as far as I can tell, I have not seen one in a store yet. So, mm-hmm. so they still um, sell right away. Yeah, and you can enter a lottery to buy one from Sony Direct. But um, it's uh, the, the 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 call right from the community is do not give in to scalpers. Right, I know you want right. one, but do not give in yeah. because. Then they win, and right, that's, and that's that makes the only thing worse. to keep. That's the only thing keeping the price high. Yeah, yeah. Is if they can actually make those sales. Yeah. Doug says he's never heard me sound so existentially tired. Doug, you have not heard the last handful of episodes, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> we I, um, we're still probably on the up part of that climb. I think. Uh, uh, for expect what? Expect the of of how existentially tired Derek can feel. Oh yeah. Well, this week, this week, putting the show notes together was one of those, uh, one of those episodes where I'm like, "There's nothing really out there I want to talk about that's like a really holy shit. How cool is this factor?" Uh huh. Except your 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 Novo guitar, which is obviously yeah, but that's like holy shit. News, how cool you know? is this? That's yeah. me news, I guess. Who the but fuck like, show and, is this? And the pedal came in. I actually wasn't really planning on putting it in the notes. I was going to mention it, but I was like, "Oh, we'll yeah. make it a real thing, I guess," because I got one, but. It's more delay pedals, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? We're uh, oh, I, there was a thing in the episode you guys you did with the tone jerks that I really uh-huh. wanted to touch on super quickly. Yeah, um, talking about the tube shortage, and you were like, "Oh, oh we would right. talk about the tube shortage if Derek was here." The answer is no, we wouldn't, because I don't believe any of you motherfuckers actually need to retube your amp right now. Nope, that's nope. that's my hot take. I guess uh, y- you've got to be doing so much. Like tube turnover. Like, what do you have to do oh, to turn over your tubes? I've got, I'm, I, I just, I, oh man, I think you have to be working them so crazy hard, so constantly to, to retube more than once a year, right? I mean, oh, and plus, yeah. that, that shortage business, that lasted all of like three weeks. And then they were like, oh, we've spun up new factories. We're just yeah, going to be, people sourcing, were like, you know, this is it. It's the end of the tube app. And people were <sighs> rip shit. Like, it was the end of days. And, and like this, honestly, and, and I, I saw that headline. I was like, "Oh my god, two amps are done!" And it's like, "Oh wow!" So two amps are done. Literally two years after modeling bec- makes them fucking makes them really good yeah. anyway. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, couldn't have everybody, come at a better time. Everybody was asking me about it, and I was like, "Oh, you now, now you have to retube your amp. How convenient!" <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's, fucking believe you for that's a second. That's what it is. I'm not thinking about this. I'm not thinking about this. You can't have it. Oh, I fucking need it. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Anyway. Oh God, that's a conspiracy theory I'm going to give no airtime to. <laughs> oh, man. oh, man. Okay. So, um, suggestions of the week. I'm oh, yeah. Play what? I'm going to play one more sound. Well, this goes 
goes on, doesn't it? It's a long one. That's the deco, isn't it? It is the deco. Strymon deco. Here, I gotta go grab something across the room for my suggestion. Okay. So you, All right. you do yours. Um, so that would require me to have a suggestion. Love it. Uh, let's see. What 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 would I do? I, I used to have a list going of things that I wanted to use as suggestions. Let me make sure I don't have anything that I haven't used on it. Things of the week. Oh, oh okay. I'll give you a podcast. Uh, oh, oh yeah. you're back. You're just back now. Um, I'll give you a podcast. Um, this is a little bit of a weird suggestion because uh, there are a bunch of episodes, but they haven't made any new ones for quite some time, and they're sort of like in a hiatus slash don't know if it's coming back kind of situation. But uh, the podcast is called Gameplay, and it is uh, by uh, an Australian chap, and it's about video games. Okay. Um, but it's not like about... It's it's sort of a documentary style uh, podcast about video games and issues related to them. So some episodes are about specific games, but it's a really historical, introspective kind of situation. Some of them are more about um, concepts within the gaming world and things like that. And there's a lot of episodes that have been really fantastic. A few standouts. I think one of them I I linked you to at some point was about um, sound and music production. In games, and they highlighted. Oh yeah, that sounds familiar. Um, they highlighted um, that fucking game that everybody loves. That was like the greatest game last year. Um, the roguelite uh, about uh, Hades. Hades is it not? Just oh, called, Hades. It's actually just called Hades. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it, th- that they featured uh, the guy who did the music and sound for that game, and oh yeah, into, that's right. You did send me that. There's an episode about the voice actor that plays Master Chief mm. in the games, not in the new TV show, <laughs> and the history of all that. There, there's a ton of stuff like the it, it, anyway, but I, lots of lots of great stuff. Um, I'm sad that they're not coming out anymore, and hope it comes back. Um, but there's a couple of seasons worth of of cool material to check out. This podcast is called Gameplay. Find it right anywhere podcasts are sold. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Uh, my suggestion of the week is Hanayama puzzles. I'm going to put a link in the chat. Tell me about this. <laughs> uh, Hanayama is a brand. They make mechanical puzzles. Uh, some In a previous life, maybe it would have been called pub puzzles. They're like these get the two nails apart kind of thing. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Except they've come a really long way. I've got a hand, a small collection here, a little handful of them. Like this one, you've got to get these two. Readings. <laughs> yeah, you got to get these two pieces apart, and there's like a weird puzzle inside. Huh. Um, this one is like two donuts that are stuck together, and you have to get them apart. And there's like How a weird that... seam. Ugh. This it's it's so fun. This one <laughs> is uh, like these three slidey mechanisms, and you need to get them out of the base here. And oh, then this nice. this one is. Uh, Two rings on either side, yep. and then three pieces inside, and it needs to come apart into uh, into six pieces. <laughs> it's starting to come apart there. It looks so, yeah, it's like a Metroid ball. <laughs> yeah, I have watched Chris Ramsey. Yes, so that was sort of my part two of this suggestion. Um, I started watching him a lot more, and I was like, oh, I have a few of these puzzles. I want to get get some more. So. Um, Chris Ramsey is a magician and puzzle solver on YouTube that has a really cool channel, and he will just ah. do a top-down view of him solving stuff like this and stuff that is infinitely more complex. Yeah, um, really fun kind of background YouTube stuff. So these are these are cheap. You can get a few of these; they're like ten bucks a piece or something like that, and they're great little fidget desk things that you can take apart and put back together again. Mm-hmm. They're very very tactile. Right. ASMR. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, right. So anyway, yeah. yeah. Check those out. And they get you can get really easy ones that are kind of just you know two pieces that fold together in a fun way to some that are truly truly difficult. Um, Hanayama. Yeah. Mechanical puzzles. That's the thing. If you search puzzles, you might get like jigsaw puzzles. But there's these this whole other genre that I've really fallen for. Well, I'm gonna just put on the link. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Very rad stuff. So. Good suggestions. We've been we've been Fly forgetting link. about um, a suggestion we've been of the week. We've been forgetting our suggestions a little, of the week a little bit. Well, it's it's classic. It's classic us. Let's be real. Yeah, 
Let's do a bit and then forget it. Yeah. Right, I like exactly. the sound this one makes. Ooh, so satisfying. Yeah, isn't that nice? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hey, let's wrap that, it up. That leaves us uh, just to, to wrap up the show. So um, as you know, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, join us in Discord, nerds. And then you can be part of it. You want to be part of it, don't you? Don't be left out. Listen to how much we, fun we have. It's fucking great over here. You know this. My wife comes in with desserts. Yeah. There's a bunch of chocolate discussion. This, I'm catching up on text. She was texting me about the dessert and then decided to just walk in. Any, new, so. any more news? <laughs> nope. Any more news about the dessert before we go? Okay. Nope. All right. Well, you can join us in Discord, discord.io slash tone control to find a link especially to there. And you can, if you want to support the show, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the tone control, where for just a dollar a month, you will have our undying and everlasting thanks. And if you'd like to pledge more than a dollar per month, uh, you'll be in the supporter plus crowd, which is the royal we. And I'm realizing now I started the music way too early <laughs> and it's really distracting. So I'm just going to admit it. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no way I'm getting through this. So. Uh, the supporters this week include Carson Ricketts, Nick Greenwood, Timmy S., Matthew Fenslaw, Risenwolf, Jamie Evans, Jeffrey Wright, Doug King, Doug Gann, Righteous Ryan Johnson, Steve Huffman, Jonas Sabatini, George <laughs> Geef, <laughs> Mikko Guitars, Andrew Walsh from Andrew's Alcove. Uh, that's Matt, Mako Guitars. Matt. It is, Andrew yeah. Walsh from Andrew's Alcove, OG friend of the show, Brian Rizzi, Doug Christ of 37 Effects, Sean Wright of Lollygagger Effects, and Brian Gower and Kyle McIntyre of the Tone Jerks podcast. Look at that. And you nailed that ending. My music just ended <laughs> <laughs> just then. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's. Let's. I don't know if I can, like, I'm going to start it again. Can I, can I move <laughs> the playhead? Oh, I can. I can scoot it ahead. All right. Say good night, Derek. Good night, Derek. <laughs>